If you go on your search engine and type the most realistic GTA game, then you're guaranteed to see GTA 4 in tons of posts. Even without searching that up, you could already take a good guess at knowing that GTA 4 is undoubtedly the most realistic GTA game. For as many years as I've played this game, along with the other GTAs, I'd have to agree. And let's not lie, Rockstar did a pretty good job at doing that. I'm not going to go on a whole tangent about how GTA 4 is realistic and why it's realistic since there's so many videos and posts about it, but what I plan to do here is perform the good can become better approach on this game's realism, and that's why I'm going to showcase 10 mods to make GTA 4 more realistic. We'll start off with the first mod, which is Arrest Warrant. This mod takes realism to another level and essentially makes your actions have extreme consequences. Here are some of the notable features about the mod that makes it realistic. First of all, committing traffic infractions such as running red lights, speeding, reckless driving, driving the opposite lane of travel, allows the police to stop you. Now, depending on the severity of the certain infractions, they won't just chase you right away. It builds up on four different levels. The first level is where the police don't have any reason to suspect you of any crime, so the blip on them remains gray and so they leave you alone. The second level is where the police are slowly catching on and are keeping an eye on you while continuing their daily routine, so the blip on them flashes white and has a green steady color. The third level is where the blip turns yellow, meaning that the police are suspecting that you have committed various violations and crimes and will begin to tail you on foot or in a vehicle, and will keep an eye on you for a short amount of time. The fourth level is the final level, where the blip turns red, eventually flashing between red and blue, indicating that the police are after you to stop you, and you will eventually gain a wanted level, ranging between 1-3 to three stars, depending on the crime or the violation committed. Now escaping the police with this mod installed is extremely difficult, it's not like the base game where the police are absolutely stupid and they'll run into walls. This time the police have a good way of chasing you and will not run into walls and actually watch where they're going. Escaping a wanted level is also no longer simple with this mod in place. The police don't just instantly forget about you anymore once you lose your wanted level. What happens now is they put out a be on the lookout with a description of your person and or vehicle depending on what the police saw you flee in last and what crimes they saw you commit. You might think this is very similar to Assassin's Creed's notoriety system, and this is absolutely correct. And as you might have guessed, yes. If you happen to swap vehicles after escaping your wanted level, or use the pay and spray feature, the police won't easily recognize you, especially if they didn't see your person description because they're looking for the vehicle they saw you in with the same color they saw the car have. With the mod also, you can bribe the police to lose your wanted level, sort of like how the Mafia games work, but I've chosen to disable it in my configuration as bribing law enforcement in real life isn't necessarily realistic. Well, I hope that's the case, but yeah. Stealing vehicles now can become a difficult task, especially if you do it in an area that's a lot open to pedestrian or vehicular traffic. Sometimes after stealing a car, the owner or reporting party will have called it into law enforcement, causing the car to have been flagged by the police after a short amount of time. And as you might have already guessed, if the police happen to spot you with a flagged stolen vehicle, you will potentially have a wanted level and you have to escape from it. But as I've mentioned just a minute ago, going to the paint spray will alter that completely and the police will no longer be after you when they see the vehicle. The final and most notable feature of the mod is holding a weapon out in the open, which now has consequences. In the unmodded version of GTA 4, you could hold a weapon in front of the cops and they wouldn't give a damn. But holding a weapon out in the open with the arrest warrant mod installed changes the entire scenario. The cops will now go after you and consider open carrying a firearm as something deemed illegal. This mod couldn't get GTA 4 to be any more realistic and I believe that it adds quite the challenge to the table in terms of being precautious and careful with your decisions. The next two mods that I'm going to introduce are ones that I actually mixed together and I believe it'd be good to explain both of them at the same time. That being Liberty Rush and Potential Grim. GTA 4's environmental activity is one of the main reasons why people absolutely enjoy the game. And let's be honest, Rockstar did a fantastic job at making the game more lively with the NPCs and their behavior and scenarios. But just as I told you at the beginning of the video, good can become better. And this gets better with the two mods, Liberty Rush and Potential Grim. Both of these mods are separate, but function both similarly and differently. Now, I mixed these two mods together into my game, and the amount of work and detail that are put into these mods are a lot to cover. So I will cover some of the key highlights about them, as well as what makes them similar and different from each other. If you're interested in knowing what these two mods do in full, then check out their GTA forum links down below in the description. The posts they have for these mods details are huge, so take some time to read up. Otherwise, let's go ahead and continue. The similarities that these two mods share is that they remaster and overhaul the NPC behavior on the normal citizens around the city. Here's a few examples of this in their combination. 
Mail carriers, which is a rare pet that are not typically seen in GTA 4's base game, are seen more frequently walking around the city during the normal daylight hours. You'll see pedestrians now sitting on benches, on their cars, the stairway steps, and leaning against the walls, and pedestrians are now also seen using the various payphones around the city. Pedestrians are also regularly filling cafe chairs or regularly active at restaurants such as Burger Shot, Cluck and Bell, the Superstar Cafe, and so much more. You'll see a variety of people, other than just tourists, now taking pictures and looking through binoculars more often than usual at various landmarks around the city. Construction and roadwork scenarios are more frequent around the city as well as seeing more people working around the industrial and docks areas during the normal daylight hours. The pedestrian and vehicle traffic density has now been reworked depending on what time of the day it is. During the day, the streets are much more crowded with pedestrian and vehicular traffic, but during the night, the streets are less crowded with them considering that people are dormant, probably sleeping, enjoying time at home or relaxing with their family and friends, or maybe at a nightclub, like Roman. And there's so much more to it, but I want to distinguish what each mod does separately now. So, what is Liberty Rush? Liberty Rush, in summary, is a mod that improves and remasters the world of GTA 4 by overhauling the NPCs, by adding unique scenarios for them, and changing the way they work around the city. And it does this in two different aspects, the traffic and the city life. So let's first talk about the traffic changes. The traffic has been completely reworked, and I'll describe some features that have been changed. First of all, Roman's taxi services are now seen in various parts of the city. Liberty Transport Authority buses have different bus types depending on whether you're in Liberty City or Alderney and also have actual bus driver NPCs driving them. Stretch limos are now seen exclusively throughout Algonquin and have nighttime escorts with the appropriate NPC driving the limo. Group A sex security cars no longer have random civilians behind the wheel and instead they're being driven by actual Group A sex security men. Fire trucks and ambulances are seen responding to emergencies around the city with the appropriate number of firefighters and paramedics occupying the vehicles. Ice cream vans are seen driving around the city and they will oftentimes play various jingles such as the GTA 4 theme or other ice cream truck themes. Funeral hearses are now seen driving around the city during the early morning and late morning hours. And the last thing is that marine traffic is reworked by adding ships and various tugboats, which transports various types of cargo by sea. The city life has also been completely reworked to the point where security guards are now able to conduct citizens' arrests on the player and other NPCs, and also have a good relationship with law enforcement. Drug dealers are seen throughout the city with a variety of NPC model types, and you'll see them making their sales throughout the day and night. Some homeless citizens will even try to sell their junk or beg for money more frequently. Can anyone help an old crackhead with his habit? Hey, how much you give me for all my clothes? Wanna buy a bag of peanuts for a dollar? I've been keeping them warm. And even other times you might come across merch sellers who are trying to go on the street, stay there, and try to advertise their product. My dude, get it wise higher. Get them hot goods popping, yeah! Wanna buy a purse? Wanna buy a phone? Powerline technicians are seen working on utility poles throughout the day, sometimes with them being on the bottom or the top of the pole. You'll happen to even see beat-ups during the night, and also some drunkards ranging between the homeless and the hungover during the night. All in all, this mod introduces improved and restored content, and it brings a lot of immersion to what I also believe Liberty City should be, a place for a lot of hardworking people to live that supposed American dream, and to also live it. Let's talk about Potential Grim. What is Potential Grim? Potential Grim, in summary, is a mod that largely introduces a more realistic dynamic with the city's behavior in response to the way the story shapes itself, particularly with the various factions and gangs throughout the city. This makes the slogan of the game the city that never sleeps and the worst city in America become a reality. But how so? I'll first talk about the various factions and gangs. As I've mentioned with Liberty Rush, this mod is also huge and has a lot of game changing aspects so it is worth checking out the GTA forum post about it yourself since there's a lot for me to even cover ground on. The first thing we'll talk about is gang relationships. What I mean by that is how each gang treats each other in the game. For example, take the most simplest relationship between two well-known gangs in GTA 4, the Lost MC and the Angels of Death MC. There's no doubt that they're hostile to each other throughout the entire story based on the events of GTA 4, the Lost and Damned DLC. 
In the base game of GTA 4 and episodes from Liberty City, these gangs on the streets never show forms of hostility to each other and instead walk past each other like they don't exist. But with this mod, you'll begin to see them attacking each other in various fistfights or with use of weaponry, creating an evident reality of their war. I could go on all day about each gang and their rivalries, but there's too much to cover here, so you're better off reading the GTA forums post for this mod. The various gang rivalries are based on the lore of GTA 4, as well as other games like GTA Chinatown Wars. There even happens to be gang alliances as well, where certain gangs will respect each other and even go as far as to help each other. Now, here's the biggest part about gangs and factions. As you complete certain missions in the GTA 4 episodes on Liberty City storylines in which the protagonist has an effect on a certain faction, such as hurting or helping one of their leaders or their made men, the faction themselves begin to respond accordingly to your actions. A few examples of this can be demonstrated, but before I do that, be aware that there are spoilers, so go to the time indicated on the screen if you wish to not be spoiled. 3, 2, 1. We'll start with the mission Dining Out, the mission where you help John Gravelli and the United Liberty Paper agent to take down Kim Yong Guk, since he's a high level threat. Once you complete that mission, you'll begin to notice that certain members of the Korean mob on the streets begin to antagonize and become hostile to Nico. This is in response to Nico's actions for taking down Kim Yong Guk, who happens to be an important person in that faction, as well as the men associated with that mob. Otherwise, before that mission, they don't give a damn about Nico and go on about their day. After you complete that mission and you go up to a Korean mob member on the streets, here's exactly what they'll say with their unique dialogue. No worry, I'll keep an eye on. You'll make my hand go fire. Get out of here. Soon, you will feel most unwelcome. I'm gonna fucking fuck you! It kind of realistically showcases how harming a mob or harming their operation can affect Nico in a certain way. The next mission, and the one that makes the mod more evident with the lore of GTA 4, is Russian Revolution, where Dimitri sells Nico down a river and turns against him. Shortly after completing that mission, the Russian Mafia will begin to antagonize and become hostile to Nico, the same way how the Korean mob did. I don't like new faces. Put that away. Hey! What are you doing here? Please Stay remain in I will kill you. <laughs> Many other examples are listed on that GTA forums post, which is shown here on the screen. As you can see, the mod goes all out to perfectly detail the events in not only just GTA 4, but the Ballad of Gay Tony and the Lost and Dam, since this mod is compatible with both of the DLCs. There's more I can go on about when and where these gangs will appear, but I'll summarize it. They appear mostly during the night, sometimes during the day depending on which type of gang we're talking about. And they appear in their proper territories and districts, such as the Korean mob appearing in Core Square over in Alderney City. All in all, this mod introduces the improvement and immersion of the danger that you could experience along the way as you play the GTA storyline. This makes things much more realistic and makes you look over your shoulder every few seconds because you never know what might happen. Mod number 4, Fuel Script. In every GTA game, fuel isn't something you always have to worry about as a necessity when driving. But now we can make matters realistic with GTA 4 and add the fuel script. It does exactly what you think it should do. Any and every vehicle you now drive has a fuel gauge and needs to be filled up when it's low on fuel. The mod also comes in with a handy little tool that allows you to have fuel bottles. This way, in case if you can't make it to a fuel station, then you can fill it up with some backup fuel canisters. Pretty neat. The cost for fuel is... A little costly, let's just say it's not realistic, but it matches with what the amount of money that you have in GTA 4. So this kind of makes money not so much of a meaningless digit anymore. Mod number 5, Deadly Rex. Wrecking your car in GTA sometimes has its consequences, such as when you hit a wall or an object to high momentum, the game will eject you out of the car through the windshield, sending you, personally, flying. Literally. But otherwise, there's never really been a consequence of crashing your car profusely and not experiencing player damage. This mod Deadly Rex makes that become a reality in GTA 4. Crashing your car in various circumstances causes you to experience player damage. This happens especially in the form of whiplash. It can even come to the point of killing the player should the crash become incredibly abysmal. The mod even comes with a seatbelt feature, allowing you to be more precautious with your driving by having that on first. Mod number 6, Real Reload. 
When reloading a weapon's magazine, some of the rounds in the previous mag remains in your inventory when reloading a new mag into the weapon. Take this SMG for instance, which I happen to carry 1200 total rounds on me for it. Each mag carries 30 rounds. If I shoot 10 rounds, then reload, then I will still have 1190 rounds at my disposal, because the 20 rounds that weren't fired from the previous mag get saved. So let's spice it up realistically and add a mod called Real Reload, which actually takes all 30 rounds away from the magazine upon reloading it or emptying it entirely. Let's use the same SMG for this example. I have 1200 rounds on me for it. Each mag carries 30 rounds. If I shoot 10 rounds, then reload, then I will have 1170 rounds at my disposal, because the 20 rounds that weren't fired from the previous mag are no longer saved, they're thrown away, as it realistically should. This in my opinion adds a good measure of realism to the combat in GTA 4 and it disciplines you more into picking up the dropped ammo from your fallen enemies. Mod number 7, Bleed and Heal. Another impressive realistic mod for combat and injury deals with bleeding out and healing up. In GTA 4's base game, getting shot in the game even to the point of having a sliver of health doesn't have its consequences. Your player won't slow down, hold their wounds, or even bleed out due to any open invisible injuries such as gunshot wounds. But we can make that happen with the Bleed and Heal mod. This adds a realistic feature of not being able to downplay your injuries and makes you think twice before engaging in combat with a certain amount of health. It also makes you think carefully in combat, such as when to push and when to pull in certain situations. When your player's health drops to a low level, then the player will pose an animation that looks like they're holding the lower abdomen. Your stamina lowers and your ability to walk slows down incredibly. Your player will also begin to bleed until they've either been healed or bled out to die. However, if your player's health is above half, then the player will begin to heal typically when out of combat. It's an incredible mod and many of the times I've thought twice about the way I engage myself in combat with the NPCs in the most careful way possible. Mod number 8, Bullet Impact Euphoria. In addition to the Bleed and Heal mod, I think it's worth installing the Bullet Impact Euphoria mod. What is it exactly? As I've mentioned many of the times throughout this video, your actions begin to have consequences, and that's pretty evident with a lot of these mods. And having this particular mod increases the rate of consequences of not engaging in combat carefully. With this mod for every time you get struck, shot, or hit, you will experience flinching and will begin to ragdoll, just like how the NPCs do when it happens to them. I feel like it increases the hardcore difficulty of the game and makes things more realistic with the mod in. And it also encourages you to do one thing that most players don't do in their GTA 4 Let's Play. Take cover. Mod number 9, Break Light Mod. A mod that I feel is so small, but adds so much more immersion and realism to the game. The Brake Light mod. In just about every GTA game, when you stop a car at a certain location, especially in the middle of the street while waiting at a traffic light, your brake lights never turn on, whereas the NPC's brake lights turn on. It just looks like you engage the parking brake and that's it. But with this mod, we can change that, where stopping your car now turns on the brake light, a small mod, as I've said, but something that adds more to the realism and makes it more immersive. Mod number 10, Simple Traffic Loader. GTA 4 unfortunately has the large issue of spawning in the same pool of cars when one is either being driven by the player or is seen more than once by the player. For example, driving or seeing a Sultan RS more often will spawn them in more frequently and the same goes for taxi cabs. This is obviously unrealistic, but I believe it was an unintentional thing in GTA 4. Who knows? So, let's make this better, and let's make it more realistic with the simple traffic loader mod. This mod is great in the sense that it makes the traffic flow more diverse with a different pool of cars. The mod comes with a configuration, allowing you as the user to modify the pool of however many cars that you'd like to see spawn in traffic more diversely. So these are the 10 mods that I believe will make GTA 4 more realistic. Again, it's not to say that GTA 4 wasn't realistic, it absolutely is, but as I've told you already, good can become better. If this game has a good amount of realism as it is, what's to say we can't add more detail to it? Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, hit that like button to subscribe. On the screen, you'll find some more videos I've made about GTA 4 mods. The one on the top left are two new and amazing visual overhauls for GTA 4 known as Ice Enhancer 4 and Project Revive. The one on the top right is a tutorial that I've made showing you on how to downgrade GTA 4 to any patch with a single tool, including the radio stations. And the one on the bottom left is a playlist of my playthrough of my own custom storyline in GTA 4 using these realistic types of mods, which probably would interest you if this video had already. Check it out, and thank you so much. Take care, everybody.